It's a case that's been making headlines for over eight months. A Lethbridge man who had been living in Calgary went missing last November. The last place 26-year-old Marshall Iwasa was known to be was here in Lethbridge in the early morning hours of Monday, November the 18th. A week later, his truck was found torched in the back country near Pemberton, British Columbia, but Marshall has never been found. Marshall's case has been a classified simply as a missing persons case, but his family feels that this could be something else. With me now is Marshall's sister, Paige Fogan. Thank you so much, Paige, for being here today. We really appreciate it. I know it's a difficult case to talk about. So police say that an examination of Marshall's truck in the area at the time offered no evidence that there was any criminal activity or that Marshall had ever been there. But you think maybe something different is going on there, right? Yeah, that's something that we've been <clears throat> kind of pushing for since the beginning is that, you know, we've never really seen any concrete proof that Marshall was up there, drove his truck up there, or went, by, went there on his own choice. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, since the investigations continued and since we have went to the truck site, it kind of fueled our fire of pushing and saying, no, we really don't believe he went up there. The location was so difficult to get to and was so um, challenging even for, you know, our vehicles to get up there mm -hmm. um, that we really don't believe that he drove his own truck there on his own choice. Right. Okay. So let's back up for a minute. You and your family recently had the opportunity for the very first time, all of you together to travel to BC, to travel to the area where the truck is and see the truck for the first time. Describe that for me, describe the area. Um, I mean, first the, the drive there was so challenging. We had GPSed it and even just to get to Pemberton was supposed to be about 13 hours, but we ran into some problems with the weather and the roads and we ended up taking about 30 hours for us to drive there. So it was a lot longer than we had even originally anticipated. Um, and that was like, we were the shortest ones. A couple of my other cousins, they took about 40 hours to get there just due to road delays, traffic backlogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was and really- And this is summertime weather, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and this is in good weather. Yeah. So that was challenging. And then um, once we got there to Pemberton, a group had reached out to us for Low BC to offer to take our family actually up to the truck site because um, from our knowledge of it, you'd need four by fours or ATVs to actually get up there okay. to where the truck was found. Okay. So they came and they took us up there. And um, even for them, you know, they had to stop at a certain place, let the air out of their tires to help their vehicles be able to crawl over the rocks better. Oh, wow. Yeah, and okay. this is a skilled four by four group um, that offered their services to us. So, you know, we were able to go up and up in their vehicles to get to the truck site. It was, you know, for me going and actually driving through there was quite an experience. And I, I think my family, a lot of them feel the same. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are spots where we were going over quite deep um, holes and rocks and, and like river rivers at yeah, one point. crossing through water yeah. and all kinds of rough terrain, right? Very, very challenging. And, yeah. you know, that made it, solidified it for me essentially that I don't believe Marshall would have taken his truck up there, not on his own choice, if he ever was even up there. Okay. Now, police were saying in their initial investigation that they think no one was there ex except for Marshall. So, I mean, at what point do they classify it as criminal? Uh, that's a good question and something that we've been trying to figure out since the beginning. Um, we, there are items up there that I've identified that are not marshals. And so that's frustrating, you know, for us to hear that they don't believe anyone else was up there because there are items that are definitely not marshals that were at the scene. Um, and so that's something that we've been pushing for of like, we don't think he was ever up there by himself or maybe even not ever up there. Um, they were able to get into his financial records and found that, you know, nothing significant was found. That includes no gas stops to get his vehicle there because right. his truck would have taken a lot of fuel to get there. Yeah. I know for us, we stopped at least three times right. just to get gas. Yeah. Um, and so like for that, you know, I don't believe that he was ever up there. Um, either by his choice or on his own. Okay, now Marshall was an, an avid outdoorsman, right? And he did enjoy hiking. Um, are you, like, how do you know for sure that he wasn't familiar with the area? Um, that's just through knowing him and talking to his friends and knowing like them and their experiences with him. Um, for me, all of our hikes have been either in Hawaii or in, in Alberta. Mm -hmm. 
and a little bit in Montana where we always have gone camping in the summer as children growing up. So for us, those are our main areas that we go hiking. And then even talking with his friends, all of their hikes were in, B in Alberta, never really in BC. He's not familiar with there. And all of the hikes that he's done, he usually goes with friends and family. Right. Like he's never really done these hikes on his own. Um, so he's not like a solo hiker. Mm -hmm. So that's all of those are indicators for us that like he didn't go there. He didn't know that place. Right. Now, you were saying there were items found near the truck that you didn't identify as Marshall's. Were, were they fresh items? Like how, like, do you think they were there the whole time or did they possibly somebody dump them? Because it's it's the bottom of a trailhead, right? Is, is, do I have that correct? Mm -hmm, There's mm -hmm. the hiking trail. Yeah, there. and then you would hike up to the hut. Mm -hmm. um, so the way that I know those items aren't his is I identified them from the first set of photos from the hikers um, that found the truck. And then since then, every time I do get the opportunities to see some photos or see some items that were found at the site, either by the hikers or by police, I've still identified items that I don't believe are his each time. Um, and so the difficult part is that I've never actually been able to go through all of the items that were found mm -hmm. at the truck site. Mm -hmm. So we've never fully been able to see everything that was there and go through them. Initially, the ones that RCMP found. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything, yeah. We've yeah. never been able to go through those. Right, because they took them in as, as evidence, right? Okay, well, I guess that makes sense. Now, there were some items that have not been found that are pretty important personal items, right? You were mentioning. Yeah, we've still never I, been able to find his wallet, his license, his backpack, his most recent cell phone, his most recent laptop that he was using from SAIT. Mm -hmm. Um, so all of those items have never been accounted for. Things that he needed, like contacts, contact solution, the cases, um, those have never been found either. Right, real personal items. Now, last time I had Cassie in here, this was a few months back, we talked about how at the time, police still weren't able to access, um, I think because of the Missing Persons Act, right? There's a privacy issue with accessing bank records and phone records, but I think since then, it's changed a little bit. They've been to, able to get in. Yeah, so what we've been told um, by the investigator is that they were able to access a little bit of his bank records and look mm -hmm. a little bit further back, not just the last transaction. Um, but from there, there was nothing significant found, including no gas stops along the way from Calgary to Lethbridge or from Lethbridge to Pemberton. Right, which seems impossible, right? <laughs> which is impossible <laughs> on his truck. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and the other thing that's just so puzzling is how could there not be any surveillance anywhere between here and there? Yep, that's been something that's been really frustrating um, from the get-go is not having any footage or any concrete evidence that he was ever there um, or on the way there or anything like that. So we've never got any footage. And I think, you know, for us, that's been one thing that we've been trying to push for is for this to be investigated as a criminal case so that we can get access to more information. Mm -hmm. Um, because like you mentioned, when Cassie was here, there was a lot of barriers with the Missing Persons Act and right. trying to get historical data of Marshall's movements mm -hmm. prior to his disappearance. Um, and I think that's something that we're still continuing to push for is to get those answers and get that information. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and for me, one of the biggest things would be this fire investigation that, yeah. you know, just happened. Yeah. No, no results yet, right? Yeah, from, from what I've been told, they're still waiting on the fire investigator report, which is a month now, just over a month from when they were up there, um, and a full almost nine months since Marshall went missing. So, you know, we've, I've wanted a fire investigator up there, like, since like day one. Yeah. Yes. yeah, and for them to just have one, I mean, I'm happy that one went up there when they did the final search that they just completed, but, you know, it's a little bit late, and we're still waiting for that report um, because, you know, if it's considered arson, you know, that's criminal. Right. And so that I'm hoping that we could then get it pushed into a criminal case, a criminal investigation. Yeah, absolutely. It seems really strange that they would wait that long. Is there any idea why? I mean, to me, it seems like anybody could go out there and tamper with evidence. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was our concern from the beginning of having the trucks still being out there um, is that people are it wasn't a controlled site right and that was hard um, having that but yeah we definitely would have you know wanted something as soon as possible and I really don't have an answer as to exactly why this report wasn't done in the beginning 
Right. Yes. It must be very frustrating. Now, um, you up until recently were living in Hawaii, so you were trying to do all this from <laughs> overseas, essentially. You've made a few trips back to Lethbridge. On one of those, um, I believe you went through the storage room, which is essentially the last place that we know Marshall to have been, right, on that morning of November 18th. So he left your mom's house on November 17th, late in the evening, right? went to the storage room and no idea what he was needing or looking for? No, I think that's something that has kind of puzzled us too, yeah. um, even as his family. We went through the unit. Um, first, while I was in Hawaii, the police went through the unit. Um, and then when I came back, I went through the unit again with police. Um, we didn't find anything significant or missing. Mm -hmm. um, interesting though, we did find all of our camping gear. Right. So, you know, if Marshall had been wanting to go camping or do some hiking or backpacking on his own, all of our gear was in our unit together. Um, yeah, and the other important fact is that the gear that you need to go backpacking overnight if you're carrying all your stuff in is very different than the gear that you take when you just drive up to a campsite and pull it out of your car. Right. It's different weights, it's different, packed differently, different sizes. Um, and so we don't own any of that gear. Marshall's never owned day or overnight backpacking right, like the trip gear. Yeah, gear. Yeah, that yeah. you carry your stuff in. Yeah. He's never owned that. Um, but all of our car camping gear is in our storage unit. So. Either way, if you look at it, of he was going to go hiking there overnight by himself, which is kind of what you would need to go up to the hut. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't own that material. And if it was like that, he was just going to camp with his regular things. Right. All of those are in our storage unit. Right. Interesting. Another thing that's been a big mystery sort of shrouding this is finding out that uh, he wasn't enrolled in school like you guys originally thought. Cassie and I talked about this a few months back as well that, you know, it was kind of a surprise, but it wasn't like a big shock. Nobody thought anything really of it. But I guess my question was, have you ever found out what Marshall was doing in September, October, and November if he wasn't in school? Nobody's ever come forward and said, hey, he was working for us or no T4s were ever sent. No, we've never received any information of Marshall working somewhere else or doing something different. Um, one of the things that we did know, though, is in the summertime, he had been volunteering. Um, he kind of described it as like uh, volunteering for experience. So he was getting experience in the field he wanted to go into. I didn't know the name of the company that he was doing mm -hmm. that for, though, but it was all remote. And so he had described for me some of the kind of like help desk I, um, activities he had been doing or learning from this company. Um, so we've never heard from them. Um, and that's something that he definitely could have continued doing in September, October. Um, we also know that he had been working on um, a game online. And he had okay. been working on that. He had put about 800 hours into it. Yes, and he had been working on it um, the morning that he went down to Lethbridge as well. So on the 17th. Yeah, and when you went through the apartment, nothing jumped out at you. It didn't look like somebody that wasn't planning on ever coming back, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. His stuff was all there. It was all left in, you know, normal condition. What do you think happened to Marshall in your heart of hearts? You know, it, that's something I ask myself every day. Like, I, there is not a time that goes by where I don't kind of think about it and flip-flop on what I think happened. Um, you know, whether he something happened unintentionally or he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, I really don't know. I've thought about every single scenario and, you know, thought about them all the time. But I think for me, one of the things that we're trying to do is kind of stick with what we know and what we've been crossing off the list. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I can confidently say, like, I don't believe that he went up there on his own choice or maybe was never even up there. And so that's why I feel strongly that we should start looking into different locations and different things that might have happened to him mm -hmm. and primarily push this into a criminal case. Right. Yeah, I wonder what it would take to, to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, that's something that we're still trying to explore and figure out because um, I think this realm of missing persons is so new to us and, yeah. you know, our, every case is so unique. So we're still trying to figure it out of, you know, what will it take? Because um, at this point, he's been missing for so long. There's been no activity. His vehicle's been found in a remote area that he's not familiar with. It's been completely burnt out. Um, you know, and maybe if they get the fire investigation report and it's arson, then we can get that push into criminal. How did it feel going back to that spot and seeing his truck? Was it like closure for you or did it 
open to more questions than answers. It really opened up a lot of questions with the items that were found there. Um, and just, just getting up to the truck site really made us be like, our family question more what could have happened to Marshall. Right. Okay. Well, I know we st there's still missing posters out there and whatnot. What would you like to say uh, to anybody who might have any information? I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, now that we're moving into summer and people are going to be out and about, um, just asking if, if you need any posters or if you're heading out anywhere, if you can put up posters, that would be awesome. Um, sharing our information online, all of that's so helpful in spreading awareness and keeping some focus on Marshall and that he's still missing and, and we're still looking for answers. And, you know, we really won't stop until we have answers to what happened. Um, and so, you know, any way that people can help, sharing online is always helpful. Joining our Find Marshall Iwasa Facebook group, mm -hmm. that's where we share all of our information and our updates. And it's actually our family that's running it. So, you know, if people are asking questions, it's usually myself or one of my family members that's actually replying to them. So it's a good platform for us to communicate with the public and they've been, it's been so helpful to have because we've been able to get really great ideas from the public that are throwing their ideas, their thoughts out mm -hmm. to us. You know, people that are familiar with Pemberton and the Brian Waddington hut reached out to us and said, hey, you know, it must have been someone that knew this area that got up there because it's really difficult. And all of that has been yeah. so helpful to us. Yeah. So, you know, anything people can do to help would be really appreciated. Definitely. <clears throat> and it's in the hands of the Lethbridge Police Service now. So yes. definitely call Crime Stoppers, call LPS. Mm -hmm. If you have any tips, yep, yeah, definitely reach 100%. out to police. Paige, thank you so much for being here with us today. I know this is such a difficult time for you and your family, but we really appreciate it. Thank you for having us, yeah, and keeping helping us keep the awareness of Marshall out there. It's so critical. Mm -hmm. Thank you.